Chapter 15, Maple Red Clothes, Snow White Skin, Part 3 Those figures were dressed in white prisoner garb and bore no heads. It appeared they were newly executed criminals, every one of them holding a head in their hands. They wobbled slowly towards the ox cart as their heads buzzed in those bony arms. Selin instructed the other two on the cart in a low voice, In a moment, when they approach, do not make a sound. Sunlong tilted his head. Guga, I can't believe you're a man with superpowers. He sounded greatly interested, and Selin replied, Not really superpowers, I only know a teeny bit of tricks. They can't see us now, but it'll be hard to say when they get close. That old cart driver's eyes were already wide with fear after seeing the flight of a silk cloth, and now that there were headless walkers, his eyes were about to roll back in terror. He shook his head repeatedly. No, 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 no. I don't think I can hold my voice in. Daozhang, what should I do? Then, there's another way, too. I apologize in advance. Then, he swiftly swung his hand and tapped a point on the old man's back, and instantly, he slumped and passed out. Xianlin caught him lightly and laid him down flat on the ox cart while he himself assumed the driver's seat. Suddenly, he sensed a strange movement behind him, and when he turned back to look, he saw that youth had also followed after him and settled right behind his person. Xielin asked, Are you alright? Sanlong propped up his chin. Of course not. I'm scared. Although his voice didn't have a single trace of fright, Xielin still comforted him. Don't be scared. You're behind me. Nothing will harm you. That youth smiled, not saying a word. Xielin suddenly realized the youth was actually staring at him. A moment later, it finally dawned on him that what this youth was staring at was actually the cursed shackle around his neck. This cursed shackle was like a black collar bound to the neck, completely inconcealable. It could easily cause one to make bad conjectures. Xielin pulled at his collar lightly, even though that couldn't hide anything. The skies had darkened, and that youth's expression could no longer be seen. Xielin picked up the reins to gently urge that ox. That group of ghosts in criminal garb walked over and were wanting to pass, but kept sensing there was something blocking the middle of the road, so they all cursed up and down. What the hell's going on? Why can't we pass? Yeah, what the hell? Is it haunted? Fucking hell, we're the ones doing the haunting, alright? Xielin finally soothed the ox, and the cart silently passed by this band of headless criminal ghosts. Listening to the head's banter, Xielin thought them rather hilarious. They were full of petty woes. Um, did you make a mistake? How come it feels like the one holding your head is my body? You're the one whose body grabbed the wrong head. Hurry and switch back then, you guys. How come the cut around your neck ain't clean? <sighs> the executioner was a newbie. It took him five to six tries before he managed to chop my head off. Made me think he did it on purpose. Your family probably didn't tip him well enough. Next time, don't forget to pay the guy, and he'll give you one clean chop. There is no next time! The 15th day of the 7th month was the Zhongyuan Festival, the biggest festival for the ghost realm. On this day, the gates to the underworld opened, and all manner of spirits, ghosts, monsters, and demons rushed out to play. Mortals should avoid them at all costs, especially on a night like this. It was best to stay home with every door and window shut. But Xielian had always had rotten luck. Even just drinking water, and the water could get stuck between his teeth. Even wearing holy repellent gear, ghosts would still appear, like right now. Ghost fires flared all around them. Several were playing tag, some were expressionlessly mumbling to themselves in a corner trying to catch the offerings and paper money burnt for the afterlife by mortals. A scene like this certainly epitomized the word pandemonium. Xielin crossed through the middle, thinking that from now on, he must pay more attention to the calendar when going out. Suddenly, a screech that sounded like a chicken being butchered cried out, Oh no! Oh no! Ghosts are being murdered! This scream made all the ghosts anxious. Where? Where? Where are they murdering the ghosts? The ghost that screeched answered, I'm scared out of my wits! I found so many shattered ghost fires over there! They were all brutally crushed! What hostility! All shattered? Then they're truly broken beyond saving! That really is too much! Who did it? Could it be? Have monks and cultivators infiltrated us? That band of headless people started shouting, Ah! Now that you've mentioned it, weren't we blocked by something on the road earlier with no way of passing? Could that have been... Where? Where? Right there! Xielin cried, oh no, mentally. The next second, 
A large group of monsters, demons, and ghosts surrounded the ox cart, each of their faces savage. They said maliciously, I smell the steaming smell of yang. They couldn't hide any longer. It was already unreasonable for a live human to be crashing in on a band of ghosts on Zhongyuan Festival, as if Xianlian wanted to actually fight with such a large mob of creatures. He urged the cart and shouted, Go! That ox was terrified and was already stomping its hooves anxiously while it stood. Once it heard the shout, it didn't need to be ordered twice before it pulled the cart into a mad dash. Xilin didn't forget to grab at the youth sitting behind him. Sit tight! He withdrew Roye and conveniently whipped out the path of escape. An ox cart suddenly revealed itself amidst a circle of ghost fires and dashed out of the siege. Those green-faced, teeth-bearing, limbs-missing ghosts screeched behind the cart. There really is a cultivator! Damn cultivator is tired of living! A live human actually dared to crash our Zhongyuan gathering? You can't blame us for anything! Get them! Xianlian was gripping onto the reins with one hand as his other hand fumbled out a large handful of paper talismans. He threw them onto the ground. Hinder! Those were stumbling charms, excellent tools for escape. A series of small rumbling noises could be heard. With every rumble, an obstacle was set up for that band of ghosts, stalling them for a small bit of time, but only a small bit. Even having used up so many talismans, it wouldn't take half an incense time before they caught up. Xielin was driving the cart down the mountain path in an escape, as though his bum was on fire when he suddenly called out, STOP! Turns out, that old ox had pulled the cart to a fork in the road. Xielin saw there were two pitch black mountain paths ahead and immediately pulled the reins back. Now he had to be extra careful here. On the night of the Zhongyuan festival, sometimes when people strolled, they might discover a road that had never existed before. Such a road should never be taken, because if wrongfully walked, they would enter the ghost room and never return. Xielin had only just arrived in the area and didn't know which path was the right one to take. Then, he remembered the large bag of junk he collected. The miscellaneous items he purchased earlier in the day included a fortune shaker. So he thought, why not try and shake out a fortune to decide? Thus, he fumbled for the fortune shaker and shook it in his hands with a clattering sound, mumbling as he shook. By the heaven official's blessing, no paths are bound. Every road leads to heaven. May they all be walked. The first stick left, the second stick right. We'll go the path with the best fortune. Just as the words left his lips, clack, clack, two sticks fell out of the shaker, but when he picked them up and looked, he fell silent. The worst of bad luck. Both sticks were the worst of bad luck. Both rows were perilous, so didn't this mean they were going to die no matter what? Xielin felt a little exasperated and shook the shaker furiously once more with both hands. Dear fortune shaker, this is our first meeting. Why are you so heartless? I'm going to try again. Please give me some face this time. Clack, clack. Two sticks again this time, and when he picked them up, they were both still the worst of bad luck. Let me try? Sanlong spoke up suddenly. It couldn't end up worse than his anyway, so Xielin passed the fortune shaker over. Sanlong received it with a single hand and casually gave it a shake. Out fell two fortune sticks, and he picked them up and handed them to Xielin without even so much a glance. Xielin gave them a look, and they were both, amazingly, the best of good luck. He couldn't help but be awed. Since, having reached such a stage of misery, it seemed oftentimes those around him would also have their fortunes affected by his crummy luck. Who knew if that was actually true, but either way, it was a complaint he'd hear frequently. Yet, this youth wasn't affected in the least, and a casual shake could have him shake out two of the best fortunes. Since both fortune sticks showed the best of good luck, Xianlian picked a path randomly and drove the cart as he praised sincerely. My friend, your luck is really quite good. Sanlong casually tossed the fortune shaker to the back and smiled. Really? I think my luck is pretty good too. It's always been so. Having heard him say, it's always been so, Xilin thought that the difference between people truly was as great as heaven and earth. After running for a while, suddenly, wails and hollers could be heard from all around. Caught him! He's here! Everyone come here! That damn cultivator is here! Ghost head after ghost head all popped out. Xilin spoke up. Ah, I can't believe we still picked the wrong path. The effect of the stumbling charms was over. They were still surrounded after all. There were at least hundreds in this mob of monsters and ghosts surrounding them in wave after wave, and the numbers were still increasing. Xielin really didn't know why there were so many inhuman creatures gathered here, but there wasn't any time to wonder. Xielin said warmly, 
It wasn't my intention to disturb everyone. I pray you will all show us mercy. A headless ghost spoke up. Chit, <laughs> stinking cultivator. Why didn't you show mercy first? The one who broke and dispersed a bunch of ghost fires over there was your doing, wasn't it? Shannon replied innocently. It wasn't us. Truth be told, I'm but a lowly scrap collector. Don't try to argue. What kind of scrap collector looks like you? You're clearly a cultivator. Besides you, who here could be a cultivator that could do such a cruel thing? It doesn't have to be a cultivator to break and disperse ghost fires, Xianlin reasoned. Then what could it be? Ghosts? Xianlin quietly placed his hands into his sleeves. That's not impossible. <laughs> Damn cultivator. You, you, you. The band of ghosts who were laughing and howling to the skies suddenly stopped in their tracks. Xianlin wondered, what about me? He might have asked a question, but they hadn't just stopped in their tracks now. They all stared at Xielin as if they were seeing something exceedingly terrifying. Their mouths were either wide open or shut tight, and a number of the heads held in the felon's hands were even dropped onto the ground. Xielin ventured, Everyone? Are you all... Yet unexpectedly, before he finished his question, the band of ghosts all fled the scene, like the wind blowing away remnants of clouds. Xielin was taken aback. What the? He hadn't even taken out that bundle of talismans he clutched in his hand in his sleeve yet, and he was found out? Were they really that sharp? And those weren't even particularly powerful talismans either. Xilin felt incredulous. Was it really him they saw? Or something behind him? Having thought this, he turned his head back and looked behind him. Behind him, there was only the passed out ox cart owner and that carefree, red clad youth who was still propping up his cheek. Seeing him look over, Sanlong smiled and dropped his hand. Mr. Cultivator, you're amazing. Those ghosts were all scared away by you. Xilin smiled back. Really? I didn't realize I was actually this amazing. Then he pulled at the reins a couple times and the wheels of the ox cart began to roll slowly once more. The road after that was smooth and it didn't take an hour before the ox cart slowly pulled out of the forest and came to an open mountain path. Down below the hills, the warm glow of lights illuminated Pusi village. That really was the path of best of luck, with a close call but no actual danger. A night breeze brushed by and Xilin turned his head back once more. Sanlong seemed to be in a very good mood and had laid down, watching the moon with his hands pillowed behind his head. Beneath the faint moonlight, that youth's complexion looked surreal. After humming for a moment, Xilin smiled. My friend, what is it? Sanlong replied. Have you ever had your fortune told? Xilin asked. No, Sanlong replied, turning to face Xilin. Do you want me to give you a session? Sanlong looked at him and smiled. Do you want to give me a session? A little bit, Xilin said. Sanlong gave a slight nod. Sure. He sat up, his body leaned slightly towards Xilin. How do you want to read my fortune? How about palm reading? Xilin suggested. Hearing this, the corner of Sanlong's lips curled. It was hard to tell what that smile meant, but he only replied with, Sure. Then he extended his left hand to Xilin. This left hand was long and shapely, clean and elegant, a beautiful hand. It wasn't a vulnerable kind of beautiful, but rather there was strength hidden beneath the muscles. It was a hand that one wouldn't want to have choking their throat. Xilin was mindful of not touching Sanlong due to the slight change in the latter's expression the last time they touched, so he simply looked down to study the hand up close. The moon above was bright, but not too bright, yet even in the midst of night, it wasn't too dark either. Xilin thoroughly scrutinized the hand before him as the ox cart languidly climbed the hills. The wheels and the wooden shafts creaked as they rolled. So? Sanlong asked. Xilin took his time, then slowly said, You've got a good hand. Oh yeah? How so? Sanlong asked. Xilin raised his head and said warmly, You have a strong character, quite stubborn, but whenever you run into obstacles, you remain true to yourself and are able to transform the bad to good. You have a limitless well of good fortune, your future is bright and full of success. All of that was complete bullshit, made up on the spot. Xilin had never learned palmistry. Once upon a time, when he was still banished, he often regretted not learning palmistry or face reading at the royal holy pavilion. 
If he had the skills, then earning pennies on the streets wouldn't have been so hard, and he wouldn't have to busk or shatter boulders on his chest. What he really wanted to see wasn't the fortune of this youth, but rather whether his hands had fingerprints and palm prints. Normal ghosts and monsters could fabricate fake bodies and pretend to be human, but their craft was rough and often overlooked minute details, such as fingerprints and palm prints. However, the body of this youth appeared altogether normal, unperturbed and with clear palm prints. If he was a ghost in disguise, then he had to be of a caliber greater than a savage to create such a flawless disguise. But why would a ghost king of such special status spend his time traveling with Xielian on an ox cart to visit Puqi village? Just as how heavenly officials were busily working like machines, ghost kings should have their hands full too. Xielian pretended to be confident in his fortune telling and sweated through his bold-faced lies until he couldn't come up with anything else. Sanlong watched him unblinkingly the whole time, sitting through his nonsense with an intrigued smile and chuckled under his breath. God anymore? Hmm? Sanlong asked. No way, did he want Xielian to make up some more? Is there something else you want me to look at? Don't fortune tellers always tell about love and marriage? Sanlong asked. Xielian cleared his throat and replied solemnly, to be honest, I'm actually not that great at fortune telling, so I don't know how to predict relationships, but I don't imagine you have anything to worry about. Sanlong arched his brows. Why do you say that? Xielian grinned. There must be many girls who crush on you. And why do you suppose so many girls must like me? Sanlong asked. Xielian was about to answer before he realized that this kid was manipulating him into praising him. Helpless and amused, Xielian didn't know what to say and rubbed his forehead. Sanlong. This was the first time Xielian ever called Sanlong by name, and the youth laughed delightfully, letting Xielian off the hook. The ox cart had finally laboriously entered the village, and Xielian turned around and hurriedly got off the cart with his hand lightly supporting his forehead. Sanlong followed behind and jumped off. Xielian finally looked up and realized with a start that Sanlong was actually a head taller than him. It wasn't obvious when the youth was lazily lying in the hay, but standing tall, the two couldn't see eye to eye on even ground. Sanlong stood before the cart and stretched, and Xielian asked, Sanlong, where will you go now? Don't know. Maybe sleep on the streets. Or a cave will do. Sanlong sighed. That won't do, Xielian said, concerned. Sanlong shrugged. Can't be helped. I have no place to go. Then he grinned. Thanks for telling my fortune. I'll count on your good words. See you later. Xielian felt bad about his fortune telling, and seeing that the youth actually turned to leave, he quickly called after him. Wait! Why don't you come to my shrine, if you don't mind it? Sanlong stopped in his tracks and turned halfway around. Is that okay? Xielian explained. The place wasn't originally mine anyway, and I heard it housed a number of passers-by. It's just probably much shabbier than what you're used to, I'm afraid you wouldn't be comfortable. If this boy really was a runaway young master, Xielian couldn't possibly let him run around the streets aimlessly. He strongly suspected that Sanlong may have only eaten that half a bun all day today, and, youth or not, he would collapse somewhere if he kept that up. Hearing Xielian, Sanlong turned his body around and said nothing, but walked up close to Xielian and leaned forward. Xielian didn't understand what he was up to, only that the distance between the two shortened too fast. He suddenly didn't know what to do. Then, that youth straightened back up and lifted the giant bag of junk in his hand. He said, Then let's go! <laughs> <laughs>